Australians are great beneficiaries of our nuclear industry. Uh, the ANSTO, the Australian Nuclear Science and Technology Organisation, distributes around 10,000 uh, doses of nuclear medicine every week around the country, dealing with people's cancers and tumours and arthritis and the like. Now, we have an international obligation, Michael, to actually store this waste here at home. Now, currently it's stored at around 100 different sites. It's much safer to store it at one uh, suitable uh, purpose-built site, and that's why we've had this process where we've invited landowners to put forward voluntarily uh, their, their names. There were 28 nominations. We've chosen six. Uh, it's been rigorously an analysed already by the department, uh, by an independent panel who established a set of criteria, including engineering, uh, geological, environmental and economic criteria. Now we've got those six. We'll engage in a 120-day consultation period. We'll narrow the list down and hopefully by the end of next year, we'll nominate one suitable site. And is it all private land? There is concern expressed in the Northern Territory this morning about whether the proposed NT sites could be Crown land, Aboriginal land? No, this is all freehold land put forward by the landowners themselves. OK, how much waste are we actually talking about if we can sort of narrow it down to a certain size? We're talking about two Olympic-sized swimming pools of waste that's been built up over many years. When you're talking about low-level waste, you're talking about the goggles and the gloves and the plastic and the paper that comes into contact with nuclear medicine. That's the bulk of it. And when you're talking about intermediate waste, you're talking about the steel rods that may be in a reactor. Australia doesn't produce high-level waste. That is only related to uh, nuclear power plants that you see in countries across the world. Uh, so we're only talking here about low-level and intermediate waste. And Australia is following world's best practice because countries like Spain, the United Kingdom, South Africa, France, they all have similar um, waste depositories. You mentioned steel rods. How potentially radioactive are those rods? I mean, what do you mean they're, by intermediate? Well, they're intermediate because of the level of radioactivity. Oh. And so it's actually less than would otherwise be the case with the rods that are involved in nuclear power uh, creation. You might have seen the news overnight that Finland has approved a deep underground nuclear waste site for the, for the serious stuff as well. If mm. Australia was to ever move in that direction, is that an option you'd like to pursue? Well, I want to emphasise that this is very distinct from the debate that has been sparked by the Royal Commission in South Australia. That's looking at all aspects mm. of Australia's potential participation <laughs> in the nuclear fuel cycle, and that was started by Jay Weatherall's Labor government. Now, we welcome that discussion, and it will report back in May, and then the government will report uh, will respond then. But this is actually very distinct from that. This is only about Australia's low level and intermediate waste, not about taking other countries' waste and storing it here at home. Could you see that as a possible economic opportunity for Australia down Look, the track? People have, including Bob Hawke, has been quite mm. outspoken about that. Uh, this is a debate uh, that has uh, that has continued, and I suppose it's got greater currency over time. Uh, we'll await the Royal Commission's findings before we respond formally.